Well, 2019, from a farm average standpoint, we were a little bit off, but when, we're dry, when we have dry summers, we're able to capture a lot more solar radiation. And in their irrigated environments, that's where we can really push some yields. And unlike most of the country, we weren't wet, we weren't cold, we were warm, and we had just the right amount of moisture, so air corn came up like racehorses. It was up in six, seven days from planting which usually isn't normal for our early April planted corns. And then the whole rest of the season, we were getting timely rains for a while. Then it stopped raining. And then, you know, when I say stop raining, that's about June, you know, when we're starting to harvest small grain and we just had abundant sunlight. And with that sunlight and the irrigation water sources, we were able to feed that crop, capture all the photosynthesis that we needed, and we're able to knock the ball out of the park. A little bit about the difference between the record yield field uh -huh. and your average. What, okay. what were some of the nuances? Sure. Well, in 2019, you know, irrigated, we were farm field. Well, irrigated fields were averaging 300, 350 on up. But then we had these small spots that you know we're really pushing, trying to learn things, and that's where we were seeing some four, five, 600 bushel corns compared to our dry land areas. You know, we were seeing some 270 bushel dry land to as low as 80 bushel dry land, depending on what environment or what areas that of the farming operation we had, because we don't hold moisture. Air soils run from 2.7 to 6.7 CEC, so we're literally 7 to 10 days from a drought. And when you don't get the good Lord shining on you, and you're dependent on ground moisture, there is none. So. Our farm average this year on dry land was just below 160, which is off our APH, which is close to 200. And irrigated, you know, we were, we were still doing well irrigated because of the sunlight. Very good. Talk a little bit about your uh, overall management uh, strategy, your inputs, particularly sure. uh, the BS on the product. Yep. Um, well, production-wise, we're in a continuous no-till system. Now, this last two years, we've been experimenting with, with some strip-till with the Soil Warrior, and we've learned a lot of things from that. We're seeing that become a little bit more, a bigger part of our operation. And then, you know, we're focused on n fungicides because we're in a disease environment as well. You know, we've got all that humidity from the ocean and their temperatures, and then in their irrigated environments, you know, we're just an uh, inoculum for disease. So we're very proactive on controlling fun fungus and diseases. So. You know, we're pre axar early, we're headline amp, and now with the new product called Veltima, uh, you know, we're experimenting with that, seeing 14.5, six bushel response to that over our normal program, which has been up to date very successful. And, you know, we like to be more proactive, preventative, as opposed to trying to fix a problem. Because I know if corn has a bad day and you're trying to push yield, that's just going to cost you money. So we're trying to minimize that as much as we can. What is your typical uh, application window with a fungicide product? Yep. Well, and historically, uh, we're using Preaxor when we're putting out our herbicide. So we try to be before certain GDUs, so V5 or, or um, earlier. And then we come in somewhere around tassel, depending on what the disease control is, and then or disease evidence. And then we'll come back later, a couple, two, three and a half weeks after. Now the two post applications are with usually an aerial application. I prefer the helicopter method. And if we run into a lot of wet periods, which we didn't have in 2019, but if we do, then we may do an early pre-tassel application just to give us that little bit of extension uh, of de disease protection. When you're, uh about your disease prevention, are you, are you scouting and applying uh, yeah. or do you have just a cut and dried uh, schedule that you're applying? Well, um, in, throughout our season, you know, we, the most important thing a grower can see in his field is a shadow. So I'm in a cornfield, not every day, but I'm in cornfields re religiously on a routine matter. And when we're looking, some of our areas are going to be a little bit further along than some others. And when we start seeing some disease or networking with growers further south, you know, when they start seeing diseases move north, because that's t t typically how our jet stream or our you know, disease models show, when we hear that there's diseases, we're going to be proactive, and then we'll start making some applications. Occasionally, you know, we're going to miss something. You know, you'll get a storm come in, like a hurricane or 
eat, nor Easter, then it's going to push all that disease up quicker before we get these key indicators. And scouting is key because once you see it, you need to be you need to take advantage of it because it changes what chemistry you use. Because not all uh, fungicides are curative; some of them are preventative. And and we try to mix chemistry because we don't want to create a resistance like we have with herbicides. So we're changing a lot of chemistry and with the. Uh, uh, Veltima, that's giving us another arsenal in the toolbox. Well, quickly, you planting population on your farms? Oh, well, I know because of air drought stress, you know, we've changed a lot of population in the field. We'll go from 22,000, and this past year we dropped some at 52,000. So, wouldn't you like to be my seed dealer on that 52,000? But now we're everywhere in the middle, we're in risk management, so every field has got different, at least three different populations in it. Uh, we variably apply but, or, or seed, but not based on soil types. We just have a strict pattern in which we uh, drop air populations. Because that best area, whether it's at a lower population or a higher population, it's still going to be your best yielding area. We just don't know what kind of sunlight we're going to get. So I'm in the risk management mode like some of the other successful growers are. I'm sure you've heard this question. I'm just going to be no offense. Yeah. Are you making any money on these high yield <laughs> Oh, yeah. Now, let's think about it now. It, yeah. You know, 600 bushel corn or 500 bushel corn at $4 with their basis, you know, that's a couple thousand bucks. I am spending less than $1,500 an acre except excluding land rent because everybody's land rent's a little different. But think about it. Less than $1,500 an acre plus whatever your land rent and producing 500 plus bushel corn. I think you can do the math. My calculator, it still works and I still have a sharp pencil. But the key is, if growers can't afford to lose a little bit of money on a few acres, they're not gonna learn anything. And you know, even though we're pushing some of these things, we're trying a lot of products, things that we do on these high yield environments, we're, that work, we're implementing that on our overall production and our yields are increasing and also, more importantly, our ROI is increasing because, you know, I want to farm, but farming is a business, and we gotta we gotta be sustainable there. Right. Real quickly, uh, soybeans. Did you do yeah. anything with uh, soybeans this year um, in terms of the fungicide? Um, yes, we um, uh, soybeans. We're in the seed business, so we we make sure we have a great seed treatment package, and then we'll put an early soybean fungicide application. Then we'll come back later on because we don't want, we want to control the sarcophora, the purple stain. So our soybeans get a minimum of two fungicides. And if we also hear that there's additional disease coming up, we may add a third in there. So fungicides for me, all crops. You know, in 2011, when we were extremely dry, we were still making fungicide applications because that was giving that crop that little bit extra life. So to capture some of that rain that we could get later. Did you learn anything new out of the trials with uh, BASF this year in terms of the drone images and the data they were collecting? Well, yeah, the, in, when we were um, through the BASF Veltima trials, you know, they did a lot of drone imagery. We were seeing better plant health for one, but two, we made some uh, in-season applications late with their ground rig, and we quickly picked up where the applicator went, and we saw some yield differences there. So, you know, these are things that I would, you couldn't visually see. You walk out there and it's like, hey, I don't see a difference. So maybe we can cut, do some savings and reduce some of these aerial applications. But through the NDVI stuff, we saw where the two sprayer tracks went and we could see where the belly shields might have hit the corn. And then we came back and harvested some of that. And, and we were seeing in the best park of 25 bushel differences right there. So that's significant when you're thinking about making an application costing you dollars because your applicator is doing that in that one strip. Now, we realize we're spraying 120 foot, so we only have, you know, whatever 12 foot or so that the ground rig is, but that's costing me dollars.